Hi, this is Gail from Bernina of Naperville. And guess what? It's time for a cup of cheer. And this month we're gonna do really awesome things that the stitch out time isn't that great, but the fastidious fiddledy part of it can be super fun. We are gonna make a, you know, a lot of different stuff. And I was thinking when I was doing this that it's a little bit like modern day stump work because there are doors that open, there are windows with pockets, there's little puffy things like the marshmallows on this cup of cheer. So, um, really fun stuff. So we did all of the prep work last month, so that is taken care of. So now it's just about going into those baggies that you sectioned off and grabbing what we need, interfacing what we need, and just doing the multiple different hooping. So we're gonna start off easy. We're kind of going in order of the book. So our first section is gonna be those three applique quilt blocks. Then we're gonna move forward. And as we go forward, each little new thing that we do is going to be like practice for the next block. And finally, finishing with those cute houses. So I hope you're ready. This is a long video, my apologies, but all we need to do is just pause the video, stretch, do some exercises, do a plank, do something, get the juices flowing, and then come back and watch the other half of the video when you can. <laughs> Let's get started. So this month we're gonna start on page 12, and that is gonna be our little quilt blocks here, the applique blocks. And you can find your fabrics that you cut in sections three, four, and six, and you can see here, got those labels, thank goodness for that, right? And so then for each background fabric, that's the one that's the eight and a half inches, I have ironed my fusible woven on the back. This is just like last month. And so now these are all ready to be hooped up. So what I'm gonna do is take a layer of my medium tear away because that's what I like using for this project rather than the, the cutaway mesh. And then I'm gonna use my large embroidery hoop. With our eight and a half inch blocks, we're gonna measure four and a quarter from the edge because that will four and a quarter and four and a quarter is eight and a half. You gotta use the right four and a quarter though. Pay attention to your rulers. <laughs> so we're not gonna use this one. We're gonna use this line right here. And then we're using our hoop. This is our large hoop. And we're gonna lay that right down into position and hoop it in our hoop. Now, some of you have been asking about the right kind of grippy pads or master hoopers or things like that when you have to do a ton of hooping. And this grippy grid pad from OESD is awesome. We carry them here at the store. And all I'm gonna do is just line up my ruler right there on that center marking. And now I'm gonna use this to squeeze this right into the hoop like so and it holds the bottom of my hoop super flat so it doesn't curl around or anything like that. So if you remembered anything from last month, you also wanna remember that I'm gonna be doing a basting stitch around here to hold everything nice and flat and I just have to pick my threads now. So for this grouping, I've got color number 5115. For this grouping, I'm using a gray 111. And for this one, I'm using that red 1900. So now it's just time to take my hooped piece over to our machine and do the applique process and hit my basting box because I wanna baste this first and then do our placement stitch. And you can do a thread up command. That's when you put your needle up and down to pull your bobbin thread through. This is sometimes very nice to do. I think you saw me do this last month. And then we're gonna get started. This is a placement stitch. So all I'm gonna do now is just stitch again without anything else so I know where to put my teal fabric for my applique piece. So we're gonna place this right into position. And if you need to, you can use some of your expert tape to tape the fabric into place so it doesn't wiggle, wiggle around on you. So let's give it a try. Thank you. 
Once this is complete, we're gonna trim, and these are crucial. These are our Karen K Buckley Perfect Scissors, and they're curved, sharp, and serrated, so they can really grab this fabric properly when we do our cuts. Okay, so now we're gonna put this back on and finish stitching the last color. Is our piece and it's done and I've got the others right next to it so we're gonna just simply trim this at six and a half by six and a half an easy way to do that is just to kind of line it up three and a quarter and three and a quarter away from those little dips on the stars and I have trimmed my stabilizer from the back on this so I can just easily trim 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 and this happens to be a six and a half by six and a half inch ruler. So that also makes things a little bit easy. All right, so there's one. And now we have our others. So I'm just gonna leave the stabilizer on here for right now while I trim. For the mug on page 13, we're gonna need something from section one pretty much everything. It's this eight and a half piece diagonal red stripe, the five by five gray with white polka dots. And then from the embellishment kit, you need three of the half inch size hooks from the hook and loop tape because you're not gonna actually use the loop part. The little grippies of the hooks are gonna grab these felt balls from the embellishment kit, and those are the marshmallows. But we don't need to put those on quite yet because those are part of the little bits that go on as we approach the holidays. But what we're gonna do here is make our mug. So it comes very easily. I have already put the uh, fusible woven on the back of this. I can peel my label off now and peel the label off this one. And now all I'm gonna do is grab my medium weight tearaway stabilizer and uh, hoop up everything. The mug, the light gray, is going to be this color. The cocoa is going to be this color. So the light gray for the main part of the mug is 108. Then we've got cocoa, which is 1346. The advent number, which is 3323. And the dark part gray of the mug is going to be 1111. So I'm ready to take these bits over to my machine. So let's place this down here like this and put a little bit of our expert tape on to hold it into place. Time to trim this away. Now we're going to just stitch the cover stitching on it, which is the zigzag stitch. This is going to do the handle and the inside rim. And uh, yeah, it's going to take about eight minutes. All right, so now I've switched to white. I might not have told you that you need white earlier for this one, but it's really just for my placement stitch on these, um, on our hook dots. And remember, we're not going to use the loop part of these dots, just the hook part. But these are our placement pieces to show us where to put them. All right, now that they're complete, we're going to just go ahead and stick them down. And remember, even though the book tells you you need little fabric glue, you don't because they're stuck right to these guys here. So let's... Let's get these on here and now we're going to stitch them down. This one gets trimmed up to six and a half inches as well. All right and now we can put this with our other pieces.
So there are two mittens in this adventure. The first mitten that we're doing is on page 14, and it's this one. It's fairly simple, applique like we just did, um, but we first are going to do placement lines for the mitten, then we're gonna add like the little cuff and then do some other stitching on it. So this is pretty straightforward. We have grabbed from section two, our six and a half by eight and a half inch piece here, and I've made my marking to show the center. I've also grabbed a three by two and a half inch piece for the cuff and the four and a half by five inch piece for the mitten. So I'm gonna center this on my stabilizer and then hoop this in my large hoop. All right, so for our threads for our mitten, we're gonna start off with this pink. We're gonna do a lot of our tack down and placement stitches with this one. Then I chose the uh, white, which is just our, our white that, that I have from the beginning when I designated the colors, and it's also in the handout for this video. And then there's gonna be green and red. So let's go ahead and get started and applique down our pieces. Okay, looking at this piece, our next color are these little white dots on the mitten. And I wanna make sure that you have thread away engaged on your machine. So you're gonna hit your little gears, you're gonna to go to your embroidery, and you're gonna hit this needle with the two sides like this. And if it's off, you wanna make sure that the green line is on because otherwise you can have little eyelashes that come out of here. So you can see the difference between not using thread away here and using thread away there. Okay, so here is our mitten. I want to point out to you that there's a little line that is stitched here and here. It's for trimming. And then also another thing I want to point out to you, see how we have a little bit of puckering here? Well, you know why that is? I forgot to do that basting box. So here's an argument for doing your basting box, but I'm sure once I tear off the stabilizer and give it a little press on my Laura Star, it's gonna be fine fit as a fiddle. So now we just need to trim it up. All right, so trimming this, those little lines are actually the real trimming lines. So we're gonna go ahead and just cut right on that green line, just like so. And then do the same thing at the bottom. And then we're going to cut this. So this is six and a half from the top of the mitten down. And then we're going to cut it four and a half inches wide, which means I'm going to line my two and a quarter inch line right down the center of the mitten. And four and a half here on this side, which is two and a quarter over from the center. 
And there we go. And you can also see that I was able to steam out those puckers. It actually goes like this. All right, so down here is our little package presents. We're doing the presents. They're in sections one, three, and seven. They're these right here. And we're gonna do these with ribbon and green and the stripe. And the green is the package material and the stripe is the background. And then we need to open up our embellishment kit and grab our ribbon. Now the ribbon we're gonna cut into nine inch pieces and we need 12 pieces of it. When you cut your ribbon, I need you to make sure that you cut at exactly nine inches, maybe even eight and three quarters because you have just enough for 12 pieces that are nine inches. And because we're gonna be kind of putting this ribbon tucked under our present, I put some of my fusible woven on the back side of the present fabric just for this time. Normally I just leave our applique fabrics plain. It looks pretty simple, that little guy right there. But once we get everything centered and everything, we're gonna go ahead and get ready to stitch it. And I'm gonna do my basting box like I have been. And I'm using my thread up command by pressing that needle up down button and I'm pulling up the thread. And now this is just basting my striped material on there. And then the next stitch that's gonna happen is placement stitches for our pieces of ribbon that we cut and each package gets four pieces of ribbon. All right, so now we're gonna place our ribbons using expert tape that stabilizer sticky tape just like this onto position just like that and each of the four ribbons get taped into position and you have to make sure that the raw edge of your ribbon is going inside your gift box like that now it's okay to remove the tape and we're gonna stitch color number four which is our tack down stitch for our green package. And when you trim, you have to really be careful to not cut the ribbon. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna trim, we're gonna trim carefully, get this out of the hoop, tear away our stabilizer, all of that stuff. And then what I do is I tie my little package. So we're gonna get all of this taken off of here. What I like to do is tie my package now to get these little strings out of the way. And I'm just gonna take two of my pieces here and two of my pieces here. And I'm just gonna tie a knot, making sure that I don't tug too tightly. See that, like that? And then Kind of put my finger down there. If you have a buddy to help tie the knot for you, that would be great. And then, there we go. Perfect. And now I'm just gonna tie a little bow. And then neaten up the bow. You know, you know how this goes. There we go. And I might trim my ribbons just a little bit there, but now I need to trim this down to four and a half inches square. And there are three little packages. Aren't they cute? Okay, let's have a little discussion about what's happening on page 16. So there is this station wagon, and that is the car, and we need to make one of these. And this one is designed for a six by eight inch hoop. 
But for those of you that want to use a smaller hoop, now a six inch, a six by eight inch hoop is like my large hoop right here that I've been using all along. But if some of you are doing this on a smaller hoop that is about maybe five by seven, this guy is just a wee bit too long. So there's an alternative car and it's this little punch buggy and it's super cute. And I'm very tempted to do that one instead of this one, only because I used to have a Beetle and I think they're so cute. I mean, who doesn't love a Volkswagen Beetle, right? But nonetheless, so you have two choices for the car. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the family truckster here because even though I love Beetles, I also love the uh, vacation movies with the family truckster. So we're gonna do this one. And uh, we're gonna need all of our materials from section seven, and we're gonna make this block. So let's grab those, let's grab our threads, let's hoop, let's get this car made. Zoom, zoom. All right, so you can see our little car right here, and there's not a whole lot of wiggle room, so I needed to, you know, practice a little bit of um, accuracy when I hooped this, but I'm gonna go ahead and center my needle. Okay, I've got it just where I want it. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to sew. And I'm gonna start off like I've been starting off a lot of these with a basting stitch, just to hold that fabric to the stabilizer. So now, don't forget to remove your stickers. <laughs> we don't need those in there. And now we're gonna place that down. And I'm not using the tape for this. I'm just kind of laying it down. I'm watching it. Just, you know, little housekeeping. It's not a good idea to walk away from these designs when you're stitching them because, you know, there's lots of things that can flop in front of our needle and stuff like that. All right, and now I'm gonna trim this red away and move on with the design. Next up, wheels, wheel placement. So you might have noticed that I was using only black thread, and that's because I always just thread up the first color of actually thread that's gonna show. So now that we are onto the tires and we placed all of our fabric down, now the thread colors are gonna show. So the first one that shows is black, and I'm just gonna start stitching out these tires. And then uh, the next pieces are just pretty logical. They're the little color dots in your book that are gonna tell you what they suggest for the colors. Of course, you can pick whatever you like. That I'm kind of going from the colors of the car for the cover or the satin stitching that's gonna show here. Now it's time to thread up red and do the red. And this of course is the 1900 color that we picked in our first class. our car and now the pattern calls for the numbers to be white and that's fine if you want to make them white but I just wanted for consistency to make all of my numbers in the blue color but whatever you choose this is your quilt you can do whatever and now we're just going to tear that stabilizer off again and we're going to trim this up and this time it requires trimming the block ten and a half by four and a half inches 
And I also want to get the little stabilizer bits out of the window. It's easy enough to do that. The satin stitch is pretty dense. All right, I'm excited to see how many people pick the beetle or pick the station wagon. <laughs> So we're ready to make our cute little snowman. Now the snowman, we skipped ahead a few pages because we already did the embroidery ones that didn't have any applique or anything. So now we're on page 32. And this one has a little technique where we are going to fringe up his scarf and his little poof poofs there on the hat and um it's pretty easy but we're gonna let me just tell you what we need so i've already hooped up our background fabric you can find them in section six and everything is labeled of course if you use that labeling chart so i've gone ahead and hooped that i put the fusible woven on the back of my fabric got my medium tear away in here and then because i'm working with white fabric here for the snowman i did put a little bit of backing on the the fusible woven on that just so it's not too see-through then this is going to be the applique for the hat and then we have the loop part of hook and loop tape that we're going to stitch down and then we do want a contrasting bobbin fill for only a couple of stitches so i'll make sure i call out to you when we change our bobbins but now I'm going to just make sure that my design is centered, get that on the hoop, and I'm just going to start stitching. If you're curious about thread, we're going to start off with plain white. Then we're going to have black, orangey gold, brown, pink, white again. Then we're going to have red, then red, then green, and the rest white. After his little arms stitch out, it's time to change our bobbin thread so we can make the foo foo foof on his hat. So I'm just gonna go down there and grab the other bobbin and put a darker bobbin, whatever. It really doesn't even have to be anything special. It just needs to be a different color than what we're using for the foo foo. So as we look down here, we can see that it's doing this like severe satin stitching like that. Well, that's what's making the fringe. And we're not going to cut anything yet, but we're just going to let this stitch its stuff. Okay, so the next color that stitches out is white, and it's adding the white fringe. So we're gonna keep that contrasting bobbin in there so that you know we can see it. But after this stitches out, we're gonna switch our bobbin back to our normal bobbin fill and finish up our snowman. And then after your fringe stitches out, you're gonna stitch out your red applique piece, and then if you want, you can do the red scarf, but learn from me because I forgot to switch my bobbin thread back to my white bobbin fill. <laughs> and so I'm gonna have like an interesting look under here, but it doesn't really affect the look of the finished project. All right, so now we're ready for the numbers. And when I do the numbers, I have made the executive decision to make all my numbers in my blue color, which was that um, 3323. So I'm just gonna stitch that. I think that the pattern is calling for white, but we're gonna do ours in navy blue. All right, so there is our done dude, okay? So now we're gonna turn this over. Now remember I put that black thread in for contrasting and do you remember me telling you, oopsie daisies, you're gonna remember to change back after you're finished with fringe. So I have fringe here on my scarf and I'm just gonna trim the black only. That was the point of putting that contrasting bobbin fill in there and now I'm going to chain I'm going to do it here as well then I've got my little fufu head pieces up here so we're going to trim the black on those as well and you might want to have like you know your lint roller or something available for these because little bitty bitsy bits of thread go everywhere when you're cutting these and so here we go
There, I think that's good. We can always give them a haircut too when we bring them forward. Okay. So now we're gonna turn this around and we're gonna pop them out. See, see how our little black pieces are coming forward there? We don't want that. So we'll brush them away, but there's one foo-foo. So John, our technician, I joke around and I call him a foo-foo head because I guess it goes back to my childhood or whatever when you have like a little sprout on the top of your head when you're a kid. Well, anyway, John used to have a mohawk and now it's turned more into a dollop, but I call it his foo-foo head. And so now he, our snowman can match John and I'm sure he'll love that he's being talked this way in this video. But anyway, so here we go. And remember to pull gently on the side that you want the fringe. So see, that one is coming out a little bit harder. So I'm just gonna make sure we trimmed that stuff back there so that our, our threads release. There we go, all right. And then like I said, sometimes you have to give them a haircut. So there goes my haircut. Okay, so we're just gonna get rid of that little black dots, remove our stabilizer, trim it up, and we're ready to move on. We are moving on. Look at this magical cocoa. So this one was kind of fun. Now, I just have arbitrarily been marking the center line on everything, but for this one, they have you stitch a basting line around here. Then, you know, you just, so for this one, you just put your stabilizer in the hoop, then you stitch a basting line just on the stabilizer. Then you put your fabric down, base that into place, and then you put your mylar down, stitch that, la 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 la, trim it the whole bit. But look how cute this is. So now all I need to do is trim right on those lines, and this piece is done. This one was easy. I wish the rest of them were like this one. <laughs> okay, so for this tree bucket, it's actually a two hooper because we're going to make the little numbers on the pocket in a separate hooping than the bucket going onto the polka dot. So on your machine, there are gonna be two separate files that you wanna use. So the first thing is I'm gonna take my heavyweight cuts, I'm gonna take my heavy tear away stabilizer and that goes in my hoop like this and then I've folded this to find like the center just there and what I'm going to do is stitch this out but only stitch my numbers on this bit. Okay so here is our piece there's our little fold now the first color in this design is simply something that we're gonna stitch and we're using white for this. We're just stitching this line because that line is gonna tell us where to line up this line. Now that that's done, we're gonna lay that folded line that we creased onto this position, and then it's gonna sew this line. And then one thing I didn't point out to you is that I've also put the fusible woven on the back of this pocket just to give it some extra durability. And then now I'm just gonna stitch out the numbers seven, eight, and nine. So this has stitched out and we're gonna take this out of the hoop and we're gonna remove our stabilizer. So satisfying, you know. Okay, then I'm going to just take this to the iron and press it nicely. So 
So I've hooped our background fabric, lining up our middles here like this, and then we've got the separate piece that we just prepped. So now it's time to stitch out the pot part of our tree pot. Okay, so the first color I'm gonna stitch down is this white color that just kind of is gonna show me where I need to put my pot fabric. So now we're gonna line those white little basting lines up with the white lines just there, put everything in place, and then use our expert tape to tape it so it doesn't move around in the hoop on us. Now let's give it a little trim. Back down stitch and you've trimmed everything. We're going to do a color change to red and now we're going to stitch the rest of our little tree bucket pot thing. Important tip about cutting this guy out. We are going to take our ruler and measure a quarter of an inch from the top edge of the bucket just like this so there's our quarter of an inch from the top edge of the bucket like this then we're going to trim it and now the rest needs to be four and a half in height by six and a half wide So see how it's not exactly centered? That's because we want this bucket, when it's sewn in, to be right at the top of the seam. All right, well, with that one done, we're ready. We're just rolling right along. So now that we've done this, we're ready to move on to the mug. Now this is another two hooper. So we're going to first do the mug pocket, kind of similar to what we just did there, but this time we're gonna be using water soluble stabilizer in our hoop. And here's our hoop, just there. And then we're gonna take this over to the machine and I have prepped two pieces of the mug fabric. So there's gonna be a front of the pocket and a back of the pocket like this. Then there's one more piece. Now notice that two of my pieces, I've used fusible woven on the back. The third one, you don't need to, but do two of your pieces. And then also when we get to it, you're gonna also wanna put the fusible, web, the fusible woven on the back of your background piece. But we're not quite ready for this hooping yet. So let's go over to the machine with these two pieces and some red and white thread. So the first one is gonna be the pocket. So we're gonna pick this one. There it is. And now I'm just gonna stitch color number one. So I'm stitching this um, placement line in white. You might not be able to see it as easily here, but you know, don't worry. It's there, I promise. And now I'm gonna cover that with one of our red interfaced pieces. And then finally, our snowflake. For color number four, we are actually going to tape the other interfaced red piece 
wrong side down to the back of our hoop. See how this is the bottom side of our hoop and I'm using that tape and now this is going to go on and now it's going to stitch this cup shape around again and that's going to allow me to trim the top curve of this piece. Okay, so now we have the front of our cup of cheer. So I, or is it a cup of cheer? Or is this just a mug? Well, let's find out. Okay, so here's the part where we're gonna line up our cup just so, right here. And it's even good if you have a little bit of expert tape to hold it into place. So after you trim, you're gonna sew some extra red bits down. So I've threaded up, made sure that I have red on here. And then we get to do some fancy things after this. Here, it's time for marshmallows. Who likes marshmallows in their hot cocoa? I do, I do, okay. So we have this um, white topper that comes in the embellishment kit. So you're gonna lay that down just there and now we're gonna stitch our marshmallows. Have you ever had this happen to you? Let me tell you something. This happens to me more often than I should admit to. So I have a feature called Thread Away engaged on my machine, but because I didn't tape this down, all HE double toothpicks has broken loose. So what I'm gonna do is just turn my Thread Away feature off for my own protection here. And now I'm going to peel this off down here delicately. There we go. Don't worry. I still have some of this. Raise my little presser foot. And now I'm going to cover these two pieces here. No problem. So now we're gonna do the placement stitch dun, 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 for our cute little cup pocket. And there's a few things. So it made a little notch and you can see there's a little notch right here and there's a little notch right here. So we're gonna line those notches up where it made a notch here and here. And um, it's pretty easy stuff here, actually. So, all right, so now it's time to hold this into position. And now we're gonna trim. All right, and now it's time for our sand stitch that's gonna hold our mug and everything on together.
for our second mitten, this one is a three-dimensional pocket one, and this is going to be, um, you have to be methodical with this one. There is placing fabric on front and then placing fabric on the back, so you're going to need to be mindful about that. In addition, you're also going to want to um, make sure that you have the right stabilizer. So first round is the mitten piece that's going to be appliqued, much like the uh, cup that we just did, the mug of hot chocolate with the pocket. So we're going to do two layers of aqua mesh stabilizer in there, and then we will ultimately then need our tearaway stabilizer here. And so for the first piece, we need our mitten and our mitten cuff. And as you can see, because this is kind of a 3D item, I did put the fusible woven on the back side of both of these pieces. Then when we go over to do our mitten on top of the background in the second hooping, I have my background piece that also has the fusible woven. So then we just need our threads and the threads for the mitten that we're going to need are for the first hooping is pink, white, and blue because the blue is our little advent number. And then we're going to need green and red in addition for the second hooping. So there's our placement stitch for our red mitten. As we're stitching out this one, I want you to notice that I did turn my um, thread away feature back on the machine so that I wouldn't have these hairy little pieces between the mitten dots. So you saw how that, after that machine cut, then it kind of moved away because we don't really have anything dangerous in our hoop right now, like that topper that we had on our mug when we were making the marshmallows. Okay, so after all of your white pieces stitch, you're gonna wanna add the background the back piece onto the other side. Right, so then you're just gonna turn that over, put some expert tape down to hold it into place so it doesn't wiggle around on you, and then we're gonna stitch color number six. Now that this is complete, it's all right to take it from the hoop and trim. Color number seven is going to be a placement stitch for our stripe mitten cuff. Okay, so we trimmed on the back and on the front. So now the hoop's gonna go back on. And I told you a little fib earlier, I said that we only needed white, pink, and um, blue for this but actually we need to do our green because we're gonna just do a little bit of satin stitching here and here and here and here on this mitten in green we're gonna use 54 15 for this one all right so now we're going to get rid of this design because that's the top part of our mitten which we've completed and we're gonna select this one and this one requires the oval hoop. So I have hooped the design in the oval hoop this time. I'm gonna center my design, get everything good, then we're gonna stitch it out, and we're gonna start with the first placement line, which is the shape of the glove, or the mitten. They're recommending to use four pins. So let's get out our magic pins there. And then the idea is that we're gonna take our mitten and we're gonna place these pins here, exactly, here, exactly, here exactly and here so i'll get a zoom in on there for you so we can see what's happening okay i'm going to put this guy exactly here lining all of our pins up and 
right where this needs to line up. And we put our pins nice and straight, just like that, so that the pins are coming out the back just there, like that. And now we're gonna tape, based on this pinning, have it go off my hoop just a little bit, but we're gonna tape, based on this pinning, this mitten right into position. When your mitten is complete, we'll line up just there like that. Now the moment of truth is now to make sure these little guys line up and I'm using that exact same green 5415 to sew the rest of the cuffs satin stitching down. All right, let's see how we did. It's about a millimeter off, but you know what? Nobody's gonna notice from a distance, so. All right, cool. Now we have to stitch on the numbers and a little trimming registration mark, and, and this one will be ready to go. Okay, so I already went ahead and made one of the gift boxes. This is the first one, and you can see these little guys have this zipper inserted and the flex foam there in the bow to give that three dimension, and it's made very similarly to the mitten that we just completed. So. What we're gonna do is we need to do this in two hooping. So the first hooping requires that you just put in your stabilizer. I'm using the tearaway that we've been using on a lot of these projects. They recommend a um, their meshy stabilizer, but I don't like that. It's not firm enough. So I like using this. And there's a lot of fun little magic tricks that we're gonna do in this one. But I've fused, I put fusible woven on the back of each piece. Now, I did do something special here. So these little pieces here that make up the gift box, there are two of these. I only put the fusible woven on half and then folded them over and made that crease. So you can decide if you wanna put fusible woven on, on the whole thing if you want. So that's the gift box and that's that hooping. Then there's another hooping where you need more of the tearaway, your background fabric, which is the eight and a half, eight and a half. And, um, and I have that the center marked on that. And then you're gonna need flex foam. Now, Kimberbell makes flex foam, which we carry at our store. Um, you can also use the uh, soft and stable if you have a scrap of that, because you're going to need a piece about three by five inches for each of these boxes. And then of course, this is our red bow material and the zipper. So these things go in hooping two, these go in hooping one. So let's go ahead and start stitching out hooping one. Okay, let's find our package file. So the packages are, you know, this is the one that I made on my own there. That was the first hooping, then the second. So the first hooping for this one, that's the one that's on day 20. We're gonna pick this, and then that's our hooping number two. So let's go ahead and grab this guy and follow the prompts. So for the first color, I'm just threading it up with navy to do these placement lines because that's going to be the first color that's actually going to stitch out. But this is just stitching the shape of our gift box. And then color number two is having us make a slit. We're cutting out a little skinny rectangle out of here so that we can wrap our fabric around it and there'll be an opening for the zipper. So this will make sense. So you just wanna stitch color number two on the stabilizer, just like this. Now I'm gonna take this off of the machine and go to my cutting table and cut this little tiny rectangle. So I'm leaving it in the hoop just like this, and I'm just gonna use my rotary cutter and cut, and the instructions tell you to cut about three quarters of an inch on either side there. It doesn't have to be super accurate. 
but I'm cutting right, 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 right on those stitches. Okay, I think that looks good. I can just grab whatever scissors I have handy here to cut it at the bottom there. So it should look like that. Now we have to place one of our sides. We're gonna do the right side. So we're gonna unfold one of these pieces and we're gonna line that crease up right to the edge of that cut stabilizer. So we want this, if I folded this back on itself, right, so that you can see that folded edge is going right along there like that, but we're gonna fold this over like so. Dun, dun, dun. All right, everybody looks happy. Now we're going to stitch this tack down stitch. Once this stops, we're just gonna stitch out those numbers, which should say 20. We're gonna take the hoop off the machine. We're gonna take our fabric and put it on the other side by flipping it through that hole. We're going to tape this down just here. like that, turn it around to the front and I do wanna maybe just encourage this piece to lie flat up here. I should have probably taped that before. All right, so now I'm gonna change my thread to green. Now it's time to add our other side here. So the fusible woven side is gonna go like this. The crease goes down the middle, kind of lining it up like we did the last time, only on the other side here. So we're just gonna make sure everybody's happy over here. Okay, just like that. And now we're going to stitch. And this one is the tack down stitch at the top and bottom. So we're gonna take our hoop off and we're gonna flip this one to the other side, just like this. Fold that over, make sure it's happy, nice and flat. And, and now it's gonna stitch this box placement guide. And I have another piece that we're gonna put just there. All right. And now let's stitch the tack down stitch. Now you are just going to trim the bottom edge, but you're gonna leave the side pieces, only trim the bottom edge of this. Okay, so now it's zipper time, and I apologize because I think earlier I told you that the zipper went with the second hooping, but 
obviously, we need to put the zipper on this hooping. So we're lining the zipper up where the zipper coils are going right down the middle of that little sliver gap that's in this piece. And my zipper is fully zipped. And then I've got my tape here. And now we're gonna change our color to red so that it matches the zipper. Okay, so this is complete. Now we have to build the foundation to put this on. Now we're gonna stitch our flex foam down, but we need to do the placement lines first. So now this is our tack down stitch for our flex foam. And now we're stitching a placement line to put our red fabric. Cover that area so this has a nice dimensional look. And we're going to stitch this down. Now one thing I want you to be mindful of is that once when we cut this one, we don't have to cut it so super duper close because the stretch of going over this puffy stuff pulls the fabric as it stitches. So we want to leave a little bit around this edge. Right, you can see I didn't go quite all the way to the edge when I cut, but now we're going to do that satin stitching to cover and everything should be really cute looking on this thing. Now it's time for our placement line to put our zippered unit that we made in the first hooping. So we're going to place this down and we want to make sure our zipper head is kind of in the middle here but i do want to show you that i'm not doing that trick where i use the pins i found it was just as easy to line up my previous stitching here with the previous stitching and i got a very nice result without pinning but you can do the method that's in the instructions if you like I'm just getting mine super straight right here in the hoop, lining my tack down stitches of my pot, getting that side done, okay. Then I'm going to take the zipper down here at the bottom. And then check to make sure that the zipper is centered over the line there and it, and it is. And I'm going to tape the zipper together up here. All right, so now we're ready to do this stitch down, tack down line. And just be careful here. I didn't really want that to be flopped over like that. So I'm just going to take my little snips and cut that one little stitch there. There we go. All right, and then notice that my red line went right where the green line went. So that's kind of a good indication to me that this was centered very nicely where it needed to be. And now all I'm gonna do is very closely trim around my shape here and change my thread after I've trimmed to gray. All right, let's stitch this down.
Okay, so this is done, super happy, super cute, but we're gonna change our needle now because we've I've done two blocks where I've stitched over these weird coils and just think it's time to put a new needle in here. So there are three houses in this cup of chair project and I did one of them already so that you can see. In this one, it was a one hooping for the applique but another hooping just to make the three-dimensional door. So we're gonna do the house with the tan house first, and then I'm gonna take you through the final house where one, the tan house has a three-dimensional window and the red house roof or whatever, the final house has a, a working door as well. I thought it would be best practice to show you how to make one of these projects the house that has the two parts. So tan house roof from section five is actually also a two hooper, but it's really a three hooper because we're gonna make the roof, which you can see right here. And I've got this piece already hooped up. This is my background. This is, I need my little red roof fabric. And then I need this sparkle from our embellishments kit. So this kind of goes just like our regular applique projects. And then the second part is going to be making that window pocket. Um, there's a window pocket in here. You can see right here you use two layers of water soluble stabilizer just like our door on our first piece like this and it's just pretty simple you're just following the prompts so a little bit of housekeeping before I put this under my machine is we want to peel off this harder plastic covering on this glitter sheet because it's not supposed to be this thick this vinyl is a little bit thinner and so you just want to get that started and peel that clear piece off because all we're going to be appliquing is this thinner bit here. So now that we've done that and we got our fabric, we're going to hop on over to the machine and stitch this out. So all we did is trim the edge even with the raw edge of the roof and we're going to put this aside because the final trimming of the house isn't complete until the base the tan portion of the house is made but before we go and hoop these guys up we have to do the window and so we're going to take uh, two layers of water soluble stabilizer and our medium hoop and our long rectangular piece of the window pocket so let's go over to the machine and stitch this guy out. It's gonna be so much fun. So I have gray thread in here, and one of the things about this that is you have to take note of is I'm just gonna use gray thread for my whole little design here as I stitch this window. But whatever you use for the leading thread, so gray, for instance, you wanna make sure you do that when we go to our second hooping for the bottom part of this house. So. Let's go ahead and stitch this out and remember this is just two layers of the aqua mesh water soluble stabilizer so i'm going to take my right side up creased fabric here. I folded it in half like that. That sticks right on that line just like this so that we can cover everything up nicely and see our piece. Putting some tape down here. There we go. All right and now we're going to stitch the next color. So now it's time for the window pane detail. And now we're gonna take this out of the hoop, trim as much of our water soluble stabilizer away as possible, then fold this and get ready to sew it down when the time comes on our final hooping for this second house that we're making.
I have the background set, we based it on, I've got the house part applique, and now it's the placement for the windows that go directly on this house. So now we're gonna stitch these down. Now it's time to place our window. So we're gonna line our little guy up perfectly with our stitch lines together down there. This should be horizontal with the other window. It should be overlapping that. Just perfect, 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 just like this. So I'm gonna put my tape down here and I'm also making sure that this little fold gets tucked under my foot there. <laughs> So you're going to make the second block in the same fashion. The window's a little bit different, but it's done exactly the same way. And then we're going to take this out of the hoop, trim the basting out, take our stabilizer out, and then trim this down right along the edge, just like that. Then sew our roof to our house and square it up. I trim this down to six and a half by ten and a half and pretty much that's leaving three quarters of an inch from the bottom to the edge and three quarters of an inch from the top to the edge and then centering since it's six and a half inch wide your three and a quarter inch line right down the middle of the house like that so you're going to trim up and make your final house just like this one for the final house, we have two layers of aqua mesh stabilizer hooped up, and I'm going to make the window first, then I'm going to hoop up more and make the door. Now we're putting our window piece down. We put that fold right down on those lines right there and stitch. and then the sashing. So I'm going to take this out of here and I'm going to trim away as much of this water soluble stabilizer as possible because one of the tips I want to give you is if you have water soluble stabilizer back here and you try to hit it with steam iron, it's going to shrink up just a little bit. So I'm going to try to get as much out of here as I can. So there is our window pocket. So now we need to make the door with that little flex foam inserted to make it puffy. All right, to make our door, we're gonna make the skinny one. This is the one that requires the one and seven eighths by seven eighths of an inch flex foam, like I have here. And here are our door fabrics, one for the top and one for under the hoop here. And um, I'm starting off with red thread, and then I am going to be stitching 
a cream thread to go around my door. So I have the very same thread for the bottom as for the top because the door will be double-sided at that point. So let's go ahead and use the red thread to stitch our perimeters so we can put our flex foam down. A little trick because I don't like taping on flex foam because the tape kind of sticks to it a little bit. I'm just gonna put a glue dollop there with my water soluble glue stick to stick my flex foam down into place so that we can stitch it. Okay, now we're gonna put our top piece on. And now we're gonna stitch the details. All right, so now I'm gonna undo the hoop, turn it upside down, and place my background fabric or my back side of my door and tape it on the bottom of the hoop, just like that. So now we're gonna trim. We're not gonna trim between those notches. So what we wanna do is get up close right there in the corner. like that, and then go around. And repeat what we did there on the back. I'm putting the cream color thread in the bobbin that matches my final color on this door. Then we're gonna take this off, admire our work, and trim our water soluble very close to the edge here. And then of course, I'll also trim my little threads. This is also the point where you're gonna take a wet cotton swab and dissolve the little edge of water-soluble stabilizer that couldn't get trimmed away. And there, there's your door. Hello, have a cup of cheer. Now, this is the magic part where we line up our letting again, just like we did before, and we get everything flat and pretty and straight, just there, like so. Looks good to me. Okay, here's a note. Notice how our stripes were cut for our house roof. We wanna make sure that we align the bottom part of this last house so that our stripes are going down this way. Okay, so I'm on color number 15, which is tacking down the base door and I've switched the thread to the linen color. And now we're gonna put down the base door. And now I'm sure you noticed, but it made little notches right here. And that's where we're gonna put the fold of our door pocket. That's our longer piece of fabric that we cut that we folded in half like this. So we're gonna hold that just in there like that. We're going to trim. So it's important to trim really close to the edge here. So now we're stitching our fancy little stitch there to cover the door, raw edge. Now we're gonna take our door and we need to align this so that this like little red line here is going right on top of where the hinge would be. So I'm just gonna very carefully 
line the door right on top just like that and now we're going to press stitch and this is just doing a tack down stitch here And now I want to trim very, 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 very close to this line here. All right, so the bottom of our house is finished and our little door is just perfectly cute. So all that's left is to remove the basting line, trim some little wispies, remove the stabilizer, and cut the very top edge of this, just like we did our other house, aligning it with the roof stitching it, pressing that seam open, and then trimming it down to six and a half inches wide by 10 and a half inches long. All right, now that all of the blocks are gonna be sewn together this month, next month I'm gonna show you how to sew them blocks together by section, sew the sections together, add all the borders, baste, and quilt, because we need to have the quilt finished quilted to add the embellishments, which will come in the fourth month. So, woo, there's lots for you to do, but you can do it. If I can do it in like three days, you can certainly do it in a month. So thank you so much for watching. And don't forget, if you want to get a kit and join the fun with our Kimberbell project for this Cup of Cheer Advent calendar, it's not too late. You can just check out our Bernina of Naperville website and there you can search Cup of Cheer and it'll take you to the kit. Once you purchase the kit, you're going to automatically be enrolled in this video so long series. Now you don't have to watch the videos if you don't want to, but we're just throwing that in for fun if you get the kit from us. So if you are not cheerful and you want to watch other videos, they're very serious and very sad, maybe not check out our YouTube channel, but you can check out some of our other tutorials. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe. Now, where's my cocoa? Want some cocoa?